Today's video, I wanna sit down with you and talk about a brand new set that has just been rumored. And we're talking a bit more about the actual set over on the channel Discord. But today, I wanna break down what I would do if I was in Lego's shoes. Now, I have none of the responsibilities that Lego has in terms of making sure that basically, I can keep the company afloat. So I can do really whatever I want with the two sets in question, which is Jabba's Sail Barge, which I cannot show an image of, and the recent Desert Skiff, which you all know, I'm really not a big fan of the set. I genuinely believe it's one of the worst sets that has come from the 25 years. And I know that's only my opinion. Objectively speaking, it's nowhere near any of the worst sets. That Sarlacc has some really great detail. And for the price, it's definitely more of a display set than a playset, which is the last version that I do own. And it is a really great set. I still have it built on my shelf. But today's video is gonna be breaking those two sets into three sets, which I think Lego should have done because they do like pairing their sets. We've seen it in the past with not only Jubba's Palace and the Rancor set, but also recently with the ATTE and the Commander Cody Brickheads. If you know, you know, they technically do pair very well together, but we could have seen something similar with this set. So for the purpose of today's video, I'm gonna keep the expensive set in Jabba's Sail Barge. I don't feel like there's much wrong with the set. I'd just like to pluck a few minifigures from it and add some older minifigures that Lego seem to have forgotten about, which would have been great to have got upgraded in this set. The set itself, I don't think I will be changing. There's not much to it. There's an interior. They've added a kitchen again, which was a big problem with Baradur. It was 50-50 whether people liked the kitchen. So let me know in the comments if you do like the fact that Lego might be including a kitchen in a possible Jabba Salvage set that might be releasing. Again, this is all rumors and speculation. Wouldn't it be terrible if it turns out this is all just a leak someone's created and there's no actual Lego set even involved. But let me know in the comments if you do like the fact that Lego are giving these places kitchens. It does add a bit of that Lego humor. And technically, there is a kitchen in both Jabba Salbarge and Barra Dirt because Jabba Salbarge was basically a cruise for people that he didn't want thrown in the Sarlacc pit. But that's enough talking. Let's get to the first set. The first set, I have a few bullet points on screen just so I don't go too far from the purpose of this video. It is a 30 pound skiff. In fact, both of the smaller sets are 30 pound skiff play sets. And how I would play this out is to include a skiff, maybe a little bigger than Legos, but roughly same part counts either way and include half of the Sarlacc. Now how you'd split it in half, you'd have to create a new element for the mouth of the Sarlacc and have it so that it connects or perhaps you can include the mouth in one set and then more of a Sarlacc in another so you can put it on top of the other and actually have an interior to the Sarlacc which is something we haven't got from Lego so far. Well not much of an interior unless you count the beak that you can put a minifigure inside but even then in universe that beak simply just grabs the characters and there is a separate mouth which is somewhat connected but the beak almost comes out through the mouth and it's more like a hand than a beak so i will be referring to it as a beak but imagine it like a hand perhaps we could get that with a different part of the sarlacc either way split the sarlacc into two there's no reason to make it any less detailed lego wanted a really detailed sarlacc that would hold up to a display model so let's keep a detailed sarlacc and then we'll have two skips one in each of the sets they can match up the box art, make it look like the Sarlacc is whole when the boxes are together. Do something fun like that because most people will be picking up both of these to complete the Sarlacc. And it's something that is so, so underused in Lego Star Wars. Lego seems to just whack the whole thing in there, even with the Rebuild the Galaxy. We've got the wing swap feature. Chances are, following the history of Lego Star Wars, we won't see that advertised on another box. Not to say it won't be included because going back a decade, nearly two decades, possibly even to the original 1999 sets, chances are the sets have the same connections. The, well, I don't know what connections the new ones have, but most of the ships have a three pin connection. And chances are there's something similar in the new sets. I know they're held in by a pin or an axle, but there's gotta be three pins somewhere. Lego love using that connection point. And you can swap any wings with 
pretty much any ship you have, at least at that scale. Perhaps you can't take something like the wings off the gunship and add them to the X-Wing without a bit more of a modification. But I made a video swapping the wings on the X-Wings, on the ties, on even the deltas and interceptors that we got that come from a complete different era. The wings are compatible with each other, which is really, really cool. And their models dating all the way back from 2012 to the most modern sets. So what I'd like to see with this is half a Sarlacc in either set that can combine. And then we've got two skiffs. There are only two skiffs in the scene. In return are the Jedi. One of the ones that the heroes escape with and one of the ones that the other characters escape on, which for some reason I thought one of the skiffs got destroyed in Return of the Jedi. But I did watch it when I was making this video because I also don't remember some of the characters appearing like Bib Fortuna and Max Rebo on the actual Sal Barge. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's stick to the playsets here. So we've got our two skiffs and we've got our Sarlacc. On display, they will look great against Jabba's Sour Barge if LEGO were to ever make a set. Whereas now we've only got one on display and if you have an older version, perhaps that will suffice. But the older versions are a lot bigger than the new one. And on top of that, I don't think they're as compatible. The new one's definitely more detailed and the older ones well, the 2018 or whenever the last one was released does look a bit sleeker than the new one. And I think it's to do with less small parts used, which is another thing LEGO Star Wars have to tackle on a few ships. I won't get into it in this video, but I do feel like a lot of the smaller pieces take away from the LEGO feel sometimes and lead them closer towards model. But honestly, it's given us more detail. I'm not going to complain about it. But because we now have these two sets, and I think there are four or five, possibly even six if you include nine now, minifigures in the new set. Well, these two sets I value at about £30. You're getting rid of half of the Sarlacc, which is like half the pieces in the set. The skiff itself doesn't include that many pieces, even when compared to the older models for the size of it and how many smaller pieces they use. So you're getting rid of at least half that price tag. It retails for something crazy like 60 70 pound in the UK and overseas, especially looking at Canadian and Australian dollars, I dread to think how big that number is for a desert skiff that you could get a few years back for 30 pound. But in these 30 pound sets, you've got to include four minifigures. Again, possibly three based on Lego's history, sometimes even as low as two. But to get the play side of it, because 30 pound, you're looking at a play set now you can argue that closer to 100 is definitely more for display because it's the same region that the dioramas are priced in. But £30, no question about it, is definitely a play and display set at best, if not just purely for play. So for the first set, the minifigures I've included are Han, Leia, the brand new Leia that could possibly have dual molded legs and a brand new hairpiece. Again, images might be up on the Discord. And as well as this, we've got Kathaba and Wolf, which are minifigures that as of recording this video, Lego haven't made into minifigure form. I think there's only a handful of the henchmen. You get the ones on top of the sail barge and the ones on the skiff, but these are two from the skiffs rather than the sail barge. So I'd love to get some of the sail barge minifigures that fill the top of the actual sail barge, especially if we were to be getting a UCS model, I think they could go really well on the top of the barge. But these are minifigures that were on the skiff, at least I'm pretty sure they are. I'm a bit rough with these names because they're characters that show up for Probably not even a minute screen time in the start. Well, not even the start of Return of the Jedi. I think it's from like 20 minutes in to about 40 minutes in. And then we never see half of them again because of the great disaster. But we also have a second set. So the second set can include our Lando, our Luke. I have missed out Chewbacca and that is done on purpose. I feel like Chewbacca's in so many sets. He's already available in sets like the Yavin set. I don't think there's necessarily a cheaper set. It would have been nice to have included a Wookiee in Yoda shuttle just because we could have done with a third minifigure based on the price. I know it's not appropriate to the shuttle, but you've got that connection with Yoda. So there's definitely a possibility for a third minifigure 
in there. Maybe we could have included Chewie to keep the price down and sacrifice someone like Luke, who the minifigure from the Dark Trooper attack set is perfect for this scene. Or even someone like Han Solo, who we've got quite a few times with a few different slave ones. And really any time Han Solo in Carbonite pops up or even the scene where he's being put into the Carbonite. So Han and Chewie are a bit 50-50. Perhaps we could have got Chewbacca with his belt the wrong way round to match up to the Han and Luke minifigures. But we'll get onto that again in a second. We've got Luke and Lando in the second set, Leia and Han in the first set. There are four main heroes we need. Chewie, R2, 3PO, perhaps include them in the salvage. They're minifigures we've already got. If they are included in the salvage, I would like to see the UCS 3PO. R2D2, I guess, is going to have the tray with the drinks on, so it'd be good to get some exclusive drink molds, which you never know, Lego might do. And also Chewbacca, give him arm print in, give him even side of the leg print in at this point. Make him exclusive to it. I'm so surprised we didn't see that with the buildable Chewbacca. We didn't see any exclusive minifigure. It was the same one we've been getting for what feels like forever. It's been over a decade at this point. I don't know exactly how long it's been, but they need to do something to Chewbacca to these expensive sets because the point of a UCS set in terms of minifigures is to give something that a collector would want. Is a collector going to be fussed about this rare character that pops up for a few minutes? Possibly, but that is what can get everyone buying the Playscale sets because not many people will be willing to pay a lot of money for these lesser known characters, unless there are some personal ties. So by including these characters in the bigger sets, you're taking up the space that we could get a Chewbacca with arm printing exclusive to the Sal Barge. There are tons of Chewbacca fans out there. How many Star Wars fans are in love with a character called Woof, who is just Woof with an extra O and shows up for a few minutes or perhaps I think you see my point without having to list off all the other named characters that show up for a second. But not only would this give us a new Chewbacca minifigure, which again, arm print inside of the leg, you don't have to do both. Pick one, legs are already printed, so I don't know how much more expensive it is to do side of the leg printing when you're already printing on legs, or if that's just a different machine Lego use. There's side of the leg printing, arm printing on a lot of Monkey Kid sets on... I think I've seen it on a few Ninjago sets, but I'm not sure how rare those minifigures are. And a bunch of other Lego themes like Dreams, who are getting some really, really detailed printing. And all I want is a bit of fur on the side of Chewbacca. But by giving these exclusive minifigures of loved characters, you're increasing the amount of people that are going to be buying this set, possibly not even displaying the whole barge itself, parting it out, selling the pieces on Bricklink, trying to get their money back or as much as they can as most of the value is definitely in these minifigures and giving them almost a reward for it rather than locking a few characters behind a paywall we saw it with captain rex they put rex in the venetar they also put yularen in the venetar but yularen the tie pilots most of the time they can be made using existing parts in lego and just need a bit of creativity a lot of these pieces exist elsewhere or there are similar versions of with Captain Rex it was very very hard to do so they release him in a Y-Wing microfighter what if they did that with the rest of the characters from this set a few years down the line maybe even like three four years they release a skiff with all these exclusive minifigures or a Jubba's Palace set that we can get as a play set which would be really cool now that they've got the new Jubba mold or the new Jubba print or even if they decide to do something new perhaps they're just bringing back the old one but with Salacious B Crumb surely Lego are going to color Jubba's eyes a solid color to match otherwise it's just a weird choice for Salacious himself and everyone else just has usual eyes but a Jubba's Palace playset would be more than welcome in the near future by I think everyone including people that pick up this Sal Barge but to really complete the display, you're going to need those two skiffs, the Silac that comes together, making people that want the full display to buy the three sets rather than the two. And let's face it, if someone's buying those two sets to display, they definitely have picked up my three that I've talked about here. Going to the minifigures of the Salmudge. Also, by the way, these three sets are cheaper than the two LEGO have on shelf. So in terms of price, it definitely works out better. And you go from buying one skiff, for however much it is, 
with some dodgy minifigures. Again, we'll get on that after the barges minifigures to buy in two skiffs and a Sarlacc pit for £60, 60 to £80, let's say. I'm not quite sure they'll be able to make it for £30. A few piece restraints, a few larger elements as well. And I think that is more than worth its value in Lego. Now, as for the barges minifigure, I said earlier about not being sure if Bib and Max were on the sail barge. Well, watching back through Return of the Jedi, they are on the sail barge and they both make it out on a skiff. Now, in Legends is detailed a bit more. In Canon, we just know they survive because they both show up in the Book of Boba Fett, which I don't think is really spoiling anything for anyone because Star Wars does have a history of bringing back some of the characters. To keep these exclusive to the Salvage set, we've got arm printing on Chewie, and I do think these should be definitely in the Salvage set as they come on the sail barge rather than the skiffs. The only reason Leia makes an exception is because of the getaway at the end of the movie, which we do see, or the end of the scene, which we do see in the movie. Bib and Max, we don't see on the skiffs, so it makes sense to prefer them on the sail barge. And to keep both of these exclusive to the set, exclusive face prints, exclusive head molds, and I do think Max Rebo needs to come without the legs, though really it's not something to complain about. You can always pop the legs off. It's not like Lego would include an alternate torso that didn't have that connection because that's how you can stud him down onto the instrument. What would be really interesting as well is if they keep the torso plane, you can not only pop off the legs but also turn the torso around so you have the arms at the right position so he can play his instrument. Well, arms, they're technically his legs, but in Lego, they are arm pieces. On top of this, as I've said, Chewy R23PO, I think I also have down a skiff guard or tug. We got or tug in a, I think it might have been the last skiff. And in the skiff before we got Pagetti Rook as well, which were two other members of the skiffs. You could include them in the sail barge because the skiffs are now packed out with minifigures that came in the set. A Boba Fett that's accurate. Again, we'll get onto it in a minute. It does really bug me that we're getting an Empire Strikes Back Boba, an outdated Luke Skywalker, and a Mirror Dimension Han in Lego sets when they do say only the best is good enough. But at the same point, it was made for display. They're not trying to go for accuracy like they do with play sets. Display sets just tend to be sets that look as good on shelves and are as easy to make as possible. So if they didn't want to give us a new Boba Fett, we got Boba Fett a few years back. He is on the market. An updated Pagetti Rook or, or Tug is always welcome for a new Star Wars set, especially with this scene. And they could have even thrown in a skiff guard that we haven't yet seen in Lego form on top of the other three that I mentioned earlier. In fact, I don't remember mentioning them earlier. The other one with Lando, Luke and Boba was Visum, who I'll put an image up on screen. And if I am getting distracted, I do apologize. The bullet points haven't really been helping as much as I hoped. So in the sail barge, we've already got Bib, we've got Max Rebo, Pagetti Rook, we've got Ortog, we've got R2, we've got the UCS 3PO with the dual molded leg, we've got Chewbacca, that's seven minifigures. I think we can push for 10. We've got Jabba and Salacious as well. And on top of that, another Reese. We got Reese. I think the only time we've got Reese in Lego is he's the alien with the three eyes. There'll be an image up on screen. Is the last playset of Jabba's salvage, which I don't want to know how long ago it was because I don't really remember the set. I remember seeing it advertised, so it was probably around that 2014 period, maybe a bit before. For that, it might have even been before that because it could have been in the 2012 visual dictionary. But it was a long, long time ago. It would be nice if it was 10 years ago to mark the anniversary of that playset with a UCS set, which is really the biggest upgrade LEGO Star Wars can do for a set. But I have not included any Gamorreans. There were a few Gamorreans, I think, in Legends, at least on the Sal Barge. I don't remember seeing any when I watched back the movie, but there might have been one or two because there is a bar on the sail barge and Jabba didn't use his Gamorreans as personal security. That was something that was sort of introduced in the Book of Boba Fett, which is why a lot of fans misremember the Gamorreans as being security. They were more bouncers for the outside of the bar because 
Jabba's Palace was really just a fancy glorified pub at the end of the day. So the Gamorreans were to just deter any unwanted behavior and weren't exactly protecting Jabba. When we see images of Jabba, he's not surrounded by Gamorreans like Boba is in the book of Boba. And I really like the fact that Boba almost gave him a, gave him a, gave them gave them an upgrade and just turned around and said, you're now guarding me. Because not only did Boba need the personal security at the start, and he's now become this godfather figure that's gonna have as many hits on him as Jabba himself. But Jabba was also a big guy. So was Bib when he took over. They gained a lot of weight because of the role that they were granted, and Jabba didn't necessarily need to run round anywhere. There is a heart that became a Jedi, and it's this ripped heart that does move around a lot more quickly. I think there was also a heart that was introduced in the Master and Apprentice book that was in a similar position to Jabba. So most of the time, they do just look like these big voluminous worms. But to get something to pierce through Jabba's layers is gonna be a task in itself. First off, they have to get past the bouncers, guarding the palace, guarding, I definitely think there was one or two on the skiff, and that is a lot of energy just to have an attempt to attack someone, which in Star Wars isn't usually the route taken. And on top of this, the fact that there were Gamorreans in the Book of Boba Fett means there weren't many Gamorreans on the Sal Barge, because I very much doubt that Bibbs letting the Gamorreans off the Sal Barge itself onto a skiff trying to escape. And I'm not sure how many Gamorreans the Sal Barge could actually hold. So now we've got our three sets. We've got the Sal Barge with 10 minifigures. We've got the two 30 pound sets with four minifigures each. And also we've got the nine num anniversary minifigure. Now I do think rather than including, it's gonna be a bit controversial perhaps, but rather than including Nine Num in either of these sets, they could whack him in another set. I'm trying to think of a recent set that we've got that's fairly affordable, but hasn't come with an anniversary minifigure. And the one that's come into mind because I got a comment on it the other day is the Pirate Snub Fighter. Arguably, if it didn't sell as well, which I don't think it has because right here in the UK, all the local stores, we've got Entertainer, Smiths. I say local and then start with Entertainer. I have no idea where the closest Entertainer is, but all of these stores selling Lego near to me have retired the set. It's still available on the Lego website. Smiths have it retired. Morrison have recently got rid of their stock, although I know Morrison's isn't exactly the place that keeps up on the latest Lego. I think we've only just got the new Simba set as of the last week or two, but all the stores, even Sainsbury's, have retired the Snub Fighter. So because it's not selling as well, re-release it, add a nine num minifigure, and I would buy a second one. I'd probably end up reselling the minifigures or at least using the heads to create custom characters for the Jabba's Sail Barge. But I'd love to see a Nine Arm in a cheaper set than the Desert Skiff. It's the only reason I'm considering picking up that Desert Skiff. I don't... Th oh, and there's also Lando Skiff Guard, which is a really cool minifigure. I would have liked dual molded legs, but for a playset, it can be excused. The problem is that price tag. Lego needs to be giving us dual molded legs at that price. They've given us Thrawn, and there's probably been a handful of others for the dioramas. I've not been a massive fan of the dioramas, so I'm not too well versed with what minifigures we've been getting. But the three minifigures I have the big problem with is the Empire Strikes Back Boba. The problem's clear, it should have been a Return of the Jedi Boba, or better yet, leave him out. He's in a mech already, which is like £10, I think I'm seeing it reduced to. I think it retails for a little over that, 13 probably the same price as the Mando Microfighter. But the biggest problem of the set, they already had Boba, including him in, basically just takes one out of the minifigure count, is that Luke and Han Solo. Han Solo is flipped, the torso is round the wrong way, and I don't know the process LEGO have for updating characters, but all they needed was an image from the film or even an older LEGO minifigure to know it was round the wrong way and it just slipped through testing they were looking at the set and Boba was probably very distracting for the people looking over there because I know usually they do get the little updates of minifigures like even down to the creases in the Jedi robes or the parts that are burnt for some of the minifigures like the Mustafar doll the accuracy is pretty good 
And then they go and include them in other sets. We saw it with Grievous' Starfighter, with Anakin's Eater 2, and it's not great from LEGO. A company that strives himself that only the best is good enough, and they've made not one, not two, but three minifigure Miss designs and Luke's can definitely be overlooked. Lego went with the grey because that's what they thought it was. Recently we've had, well, there's not only the documentary from Return of the Jedi or one of the behind the scenes thing where you can see Luke's outfit is clearly black, but there's also the Mandalorian, which he shows up in a black costume, which is set to resemble the exact one he wears when we've left him in Return of the Jedi. And there's even a behind the scenes talk on that where Favreau talks about how it's a black costume because of the dark deeds almost that Luke is doing at the start with the force choking of the Gamori and, and to resemble him almost toying with the dark side at the start of the movie. We have no idea where he is. It's a few years since Empire Strikes Back. Darth Vader's revealed to be his father. Spoilers alert for the second movie. I'm so sorry if none of you knew that, but at this point with the internet, if you're a Star Wars fan, that's like the first thing you find out. And it's basically everywhere. If you were to Google for the outfit, it comes up that it is black robes. And I just really don't see how someone like Lego, who is designing these sets, misses something like that when I can access it with just a quick Google. Lando's coloring is also a bit odd, but again, we got to give Lego some slack. They're not recreating these characters for the movie. I think Lando looks pretty cool now that I've had the character design on my screen for a while and not just seeing the first image. But the whole cast of the minifigures, Nine Arm really does shine throughout them. Nine Arm and Lando are really cool. The other three are just a bit disappointing, especially with the price of the set and the fact that it's basically just a glorified Sarlacc pit. Everyone jokes about the UCS lamp set we got, which was the Lamp of the Jedi Temple the second time, arguably the first time we got a bit of the Jedi Temple in Lego because the Holocron room was technically off site though. Definitely feels like a bit of the Jedi Temple and it come with a speeder, two clone troopers, a new Jedi Keller and Beck, although again it's a minifigure that you can just take a window and add a new head to, a cape, you don't get the golden trim, but it's good enough for a mock. And Grogu, who's come in so many sets now, and then charge something like £30, £40 for that set. So there's always going to be a dodgy set from LEGO. I feel like if there isn't, the other sets don't look as good. They always release one set that makes every other set look really good in comparison. And I think the Silac Pit is that one. Alongside Keller and Beck's set... It can definitely be argued the Pirate Snubfire is that because of its retail price of £30, which is quite expensive, and that was from last year. And I'm sure there are other sets you can name down in the comments. So let me know what sets you think are overpriced and not worth the value down in the comments. It could be any set from £19.99 up until really whenever if you're coming back and watching this video in the future. Thank you so much for sitting there and listening to me waffle on for... Well, it's been about an hour and a half for me. These videos are definitely getting on, but hopefully I can cut out a lot of the confusion and that'll be a bit more palatable for you to watch. If you did make it to the end and enjoy it, or perhaps you have your own opinion, again, let me know that down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. We are talking about the salvage over on the Discord. If you did want to join and become part of the conversation, including accessing all the other perks like the instructions and all the other channels, the Discord, is growing pretty quickly. So hopefully we can create a public channel and get more reviews over there in the near future. But until then, check out all the videos on screen now and may the bricks be with you always.